Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. We got the real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. Comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win! They win it! It's back-to-back titles for the Heat. The 2013 NBA Championship resides once again in Miami. Hello and welcome into a brand new season of Full Court Press alongside Nick Merrick. I'm Josh Franz and Nick, I don't know if we could be any more excited to be here. We have a great season prepared for you to start it off with a great show today. First, we're going to catch up and see how our summers went, then get on to the Steve Patterson news, our reactions from the first week of basketball, of course our ballers and fallers. Then we're going to install a new segment called Who Am I? Then we'll give you about some facts about today in history, and then we'll let you know what's going to happen next week. But first, Nick, how was your summer? Summer was great. I mean, a chance to get away from uh, Arizona, but I mean, looking back at it too, not too much crazy news. Just out on the baseball field, pretty much twenty four seven. So hey, from the hardwood to the baseball, back to the hardwood this fall. Can't be too bad. At least happy that basketball is back in full swing a little bit earlier than last year. Uh, fans get a little more excited about that. But I just kept kept myself busy and just ready to go for another another fun season of full court press. Yeah, it was a long long off season for basketball, but a great baseball season yeah, that we both you had, enjoyed. Did you had some good relaxing times too, right? I did. It was a fun summer. Had a job. Worked a little bit, but always paid attention to my Dodgers. Who, <laughs> I mean, going into the year, it was it was not looking too good. Then it looked great, and then it well, it fell and apart it at the end. Out. But yeah. I'll make the NLCS okay. and be happy. That's but okay. uh, now I'm happy. It's basketball season. I'm happy. We have an 82 game schedule as opposed to the 66 game schedule we had last year. So let's start it off without some NBA action, actually. So obviously. Arizona State Athletic Director Steve Patterson has decided to take the same job over at the University of Texas, his alma mater. So, Nick, what what does that leave the Sun Devils with? Well, just to clue the fans back in on what's really going on, so Steve Patterson, Athletic Director for a couple of years at Arizona State, uh, hired him after Lisa Love was fired, brought in and kind of maintained a couple of coaches, Herb Sendek of basketball, Todd Graham of football, brought those programs to a different level. Uh, basketball finally got the exposure that it needs to be for a Division One program. Football, obviously, the scene's phenomenal there. Uh, there's some big pictures in the in the works that it's interesting to see how those are going to pan out. Uh, but this is a football podcast, talk more about that. Anyways, the, I guess to tease it, there might be a game against LSU. Um, it, well, there already is one, but they're trying to make another big early game uh, like, a, like you know, uh, kind of like the NIT tip-off, I guess you could say, for football. But with that, they're bringing in an interim athletic director in James Rund, which is actually very interesting for me. And why I say that is just because of what his outlook kind of is. He's currently the vice, the senior vice president for educational outreach and student services at Arizona State. So he has no connections or virtually none with the athletic department whatsoever. It's just with student involvement and education. So kind of an interesting ad. It's good because ASU preaches. Obviously, they love having high academic success. Um, but now, I guess the question, Josh, you and I just kind of forward the story. Any possible replacements? Obviously, this probably won't happen until at least another month or so at the earliest, uh, maybe around over the winter break at school. But anybody on your radar? Well, we know this is a long process and it's going to take some time. I don't think that James Run is the answer in the long run, and that's why the interim tag is there. Unfortunately for him, I think it will be taken off not in the, the term of a full-time job, but actually the other way around. And they're going to find a replacement who's done this before. Nobody on the radar necessarily as of yet with ties to Arizona State, but one guy that I'd like to see the Sun Devils go after is the guy who was the front runner for the University of Texas job, and that's Oliver Luck. He's a man who seems qualified to take it. If you're in consideration for the University of Texas's athletic director job, you are more than qualified to be a Sun Devils athletic director. They have a far superior program across the board over there at Texas. So if they trust him to be a leading candidate, I think the Sun Devils should trust him to be their new next athletic director. I, I, you know, I definitely agree with that, too. It's a good, it'd be a great ad, I guess, if University of Texas gets him and Arizona State will be like, well, at least we can't have Patterson. We get your sloppy second, so to speak. Um... But I don't know. I mean, I agree. It's still too early to talk. However, if they're going to go back professional route, that's what worked for Patterson. They brought in, they went to uh, Patterson worked a couple years with both the Portland Trailblazers and the Houston Texans. So going in the professional ranks may be another way to go. It worked out the first time at Patterson. If I were to throw out a name, maybe Mike Alden. Um, he's now the athletic director over at Missouri, but he has ties back to ASU. The only concern there is he's been there since 1998. Um, but the one thing that's good is since since he's been the athletic director, Missouri ranked last year 
uh, number two in the SEC in graduation academic success rate, uh, which kind of why I mentioned that's why they might have brought in a guy like James Run because he's so focused on education and the full student athlete perspective on ASU. Not sure if that's going to be the overall look. I don't know if they really want to push athletics or if they're going to push a constant balance. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to push a constant balance. But if you want to be like an Alabama and be a powerhouse of football or, or, or Oregon or go to basketball and be like the ACC in that, then obviously you're going to have to bring in somebody who's a little bit, as bad as it sounds, a little bit less focused on academics and more where's the program going, where's the business side of things. Well, that's why I think this guy's a good candidate. I understand he's focused on academics, and that's great. But from the athletic side, Missouri in the big two major sports, football and basketball, has looked nothing short of phenomenal in the past half decade. They're building up that football program to compete with anybody, this year being the perfect example of that. So if he wanted to leave on a high note, he could say, I brought this to the top level of college football, and it got worse after I left. Because yeah. that's the only way, that's the only place it could go right now. And in basketball, they've got a three, four guard system, and it's been working for a number of years, fast paced team, and they're running teams out of the buildings. It's a very exciting program to watch. And ASU fans know the Sun Devils could use some more excitement around here. Well, it'll take, I agree. I mean, it's going to take some moves, but I mean, kind of talking to you and saying, you know, Missouri was able to build their programs up to one of the best. Well, arguably, ASU fans are saying, well, Steve Patterson kind of did the best. So the good news for fans before we get off this segment is uh, there's an agreement reached between ASU and Steve Patterson that says, he cannot take an ASU athletic employee and bring him to Texas. Obviously, Josh, you're not kind of laughing beforehand, being like, well, couldn't they just quit their job and then go sign with Texas afterwards and kind of void their contract? I guess technically, yeah, we were both kind of like, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but then if they're going to void it, really, a coach wouldn't bail midseason, uh, at least at least the respectful coach that are at Arizona State. I could see him leaving after the season. But Which definitely, coach are you talking about? Uh, I don't know anybody in general. Herb Sinek's locked here. I'm not a big fan of Herb Sinek at ASU, but he's he's going to be here till he wants to leave. Uh, everybody's obviously scared about Graham because he's from Texas. He's a Texas, obviously being a Texas native, he's going to want to go back to UT. It's a program he's always looked up to, and he's a coach that's bounced around in the past couple of years. He's never stayed longer than three seasons at a at a school, I don't believe, for a couple of years. So uh, for him to be at ASU for more than three, not be as surprising because he's built this program into what it is today. And it's great, but fans want him to stay. They don't want him to see and be out of here before he has a full graduation class. Right. I think Texas being the best financial football team in the country, the history that they have, they can go after a much bigger name than Todd Graham. If for whatever reason they can't get that big name, whoever it is, but a lot of guys on the list before Graham, then yeah, they might go after Graham. And if you're Todd Graham, you get offered the University of Texas job, it doesn't matter what pay cuts you have here at Arizona State. You take the money and run. That's true. And you take that job in Texas because they can pay you whatever you want to make up for whatever your voided contract leaves behind here. But now, Nick, it's time to move on. We're going to talk about – now we're going to go to the NBA, and we'll go to the NBA for the rest of the show. What were your reactions from the first week? I mean, just a couple obviously notable things. We mentioned the Pacers back on top, the only undefeated team of the season. But I think it has to be noted in how well – uh, 76ers are playing. They just got off to a hot start, 3-1 and one on the season. Again, it's kind of like, what are the reactions of the first year, for our first week, excuse me? I think it's more like, hey, I'm glad we had basketball games in end of October <laughs> this year. I think that's my reaction. Just glad they're kind of get going. You can't make any prediction and be like, oh, here's a playoff team already. Yeah, whatever. They're six right now. Doesn't mean they, aren't, they can't drop to 14th in the, in the division or conference uh, by the end of it. So, I mean, reaction is kind of glad things are in full swing getting back in, in the media, checking things in. Um, nothing too surprising. I guess that's a good thing, though, this year. I'm glad there's nothing shocking. There's no really big news. It's just kind of like, let's just see what the makeups of the teams are going to be, and let's see how the fans react. And everybody's been, it's. I feel like it's been a little more hyped than it was last year, obviously, when it started, which is great. Right, well, a perfect example of what you mentioned of things that are just abnormal right now. We see Denver at 0-3 at the bottom of the Western Conference, and we see the Phoenix Suns at 3-1 and as the fourth seed, tied for the second-best record <laughs> in the Western Conference. See, again, is that going to stand? Probably not. I don't expect Phoenix to get a four seed. I don't expect Denver to miss the playoffs. I don't either. There's a lot of things that are going to happen between now and 76 games from now, and it'll be a fun season to watch. And also, think something that's just weird, Boston's 0-4. I oh, say that. I've been a fan of basketball. I was born in 93. I'll say maybe okay, 1994 I became a fan of basketball. I don't know if I've ever seen a Celtics team this bad off. Well, Josh with his, with his jump suit and a little basketball <laughs> dribbling through the house. Maybe <laughs> if, if this wasn't an audio podcast, I could get some baby pictures for you <laughs> with me with a basketball. It's not necessary, it. though. Uh, but yeah, the Celtics being bad is just weird. It, I'm not yes. used to it. I'm a Lakers fan, so I obviously feel somewhat good about it. 
But I feel like it's just bad for basketball in general. Well, uh, I wouldn't go as far as say it's bad for basketball. I think change is always needed. And what, when was it now? Five years ago when it was the uh, the Allen Pierce Garnett show? Was that when they made the move officially? I think yeah. it was. Oh, seven is when they all got together. Yeah, so about six years ago. Um, so I was, I was like right on. But still, that was when fans were like, are you kidding me? This is what that sport's going to come to. This is ridiculous. I'm going to turn the channel off. And everybody kind of had like, this is insane. It's just going to be the Boston show. It's going to be a joke. Fast forward the clock's a couple years. Now it's a bigger joke because now it's the Miami show. Fast forward it now. Oh, Dwight Howard's going to the Houston Rockets. I think it's just, I think it's interesting. I don't think it's bad for basketball. I think it's bad for Boston fans. Kind of like you mentioned, like, well, you're going to be happy because you're an L.A. fan. Right. But for Boston fans now, okay, they're gonna they're gonna be riding that Red Sox victory for probably another year and a half, two years until <laughs> they've got some other things on their mind. Unless the Bruins could step up in the NHL, but exactly. So at least they could always, if they join the bitter bus, they could always go back and say, you know what, we won World Series, you guys didn't, whatever. Um, All right, that's fair. I mean, you but, could argue the Celtics teams overachieved, underachieved because of, because of injury. They didn't do as much as they wanted. They won one NBA title. They wanted more, but now it doesn't look like they're going to win one for a while. They're in the sweepstakes now for the best player in college basketball. <laughs> Nick, we all know who that is right now. Yeah, it's Andrew Wiggins. He actually named. Speaking of which, I know there's no NCAA, but he's on the. Uh, can, he's one of the five preseason All Americans as a freshman. Shocker. Yeah, I know. Not the, not not big talent. And there's I mean, look at him. The NBA rules are stopping people from coming straight from high school to the NBA. He's one that would have been considered. He's got the NBA body. He's got the NBA game. Oh, easy a lottery pick. Would have been a lottery pick if he came out of high school. Yeah. So he probably still. Well, obviously, he's still gonna be a lottery pick. Now he'll be the number one pick coming <laughs> out, spending six months in a college basketball jersey. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he's gonna be number one. I wouldn't go that far yet. We'll have to see how he does. Definitely top three. Top three for sure. We've seen crazier things happen, like Harrison Barnes, for example. Right. No, unanimous number one pick. All of a sudden, he falls number seven to the Warriors. So. Right. I mean, yeah, crazier things have happened. Right now, it looks to me like he's going to get that number one slot. But those are our reactions from the first week of basketball. Let's go on to a segment we love here on Full Court Press, Woo-hoo! and that's Ballers and Fallers. Nick, get us going. Where are we going? Are we going positive? Are we going negative? We. Um. You know, I want my bad news first. All right. Bad news first. I'm gonna go a negative. A little hard again. I, it's kind of weird being one weekend to get a to really get a faller. So I'm not going to hate anybody because they have three, four bad games. So I'm just going to go with an injury as a faller. And I'm going to go with Tyson Chandler of the New York Knicks. Breaking um, news. Yeah, this is big. This just happens. They just released this statement uh, on, on a couple of the channels within the past couple hours. But just the fact that Tyson Chandler is going to be out from four to six weeks with a f- uh, non-displaced fracture of his right fibula. Uh, it's, I mean, obviously it's big news when we're Knicks and Anthony is back and Amari and Kenya Martin, they're trying to kind of get things going and, and it's, it's weird, but almost saying Chandler was kind of the glue to everything. He's just that one piece, that big buy down low, always reliable, good, great with rebounds. Obviously that's where they brought him in there to kind of help out the Anthony's and the Stoudemire's of don't worry about that too much. That's why you have Chandler. Why I brought him in just a big blow. I mean, it's going to hurt him for a, over a month. Everywhere he's gone, he has been the centerpiece of the defense, the rebounding edge, and a vocal leader for his team. It's going to be tough for him now on the sideline for guys to listen to him and to to really do – well, I guess it's harder to replace what he does on the court <laughs> because Carmelo Anthony is not going to go up and get 12 rebounds a game. No. Amari Stoudemire is not going to go up and get 10 rebounds a game and block shots and play defense. Right. So this team is going to struggle. They're now going to be reliant on the offensive side of the basketball when really – they have a few options, but they, they're they not good enough to, to be scoring 120 points a night. And now without Chandler, who knows if they're good enough to give up less than 110 points a night. So we'll see where this team goes. Now, do you want to do your ball or do you want me to do my fall? you got to go with your negative. We're going double negatives and double positives. All right, my negative is also not from the first week. And it's probably from about the last year and a half. And it's going to be the entire Boston Celtics roster. There it is. Here's what you lose. Rajon Rondo's hurt. Paul Pierce, future Hall of Famer, gone to to Brooklyn. Kevin Garnett, future Hall of Famer, gone to Brooklyn. Ray Allen, future Hall of Famer, gone to Miami, wins a ring. Uh, I feel like I'm leaving somebody out. Oh, yeah, the coach, Doc Rivers. Now, here's when you know things are weird in the NBA. When somebody leaves the Celtics to coach the Clippers. The Clippers are historically the worst franchise in NBA history. Celtics, a top two franchise in NBA history, and your coach wants to leave to coach the other team. So things are weird right now in the NBA. Jock Rivers is having success so far in LA. Who knows if that'll last, if they can ever take over that city. I doubt they will, but there's a little personal Lakers bias in there for you. 
but yeah, it's it's just a weird thing in the NBA right now. So my my fallers are the Boston Celtics. However, I wish Jeff Green the best of luck. We could almost make it a faller because of uh, the fact that their coach was traded in a package deal, which makes it even worse. But uh, yeah, I don't blame that. I mean, Boston, like you mentioned, there you know it's a bad year for them in basketball. It could have been a phenomenal four before that. Uh, they just weren't able to capitalize on it. So now let's go to some positive news here. We're gonna go to some we're gonna go to some ballers this week and actually you know what? i had a little interest in this one if you're gonna go with the team i feel like i'm gonna go with the team i'm gonna go with my my ballers as the chicago bulls and the reason why i say that it okay. wait the, the one and two bulls are ballers now i'm making them ballers just because of some of the statements that were released for their program more uh when derrick rose waited everybody's been giving him heart they're a bad time they're still giving him a rough time i still he, have a loss of respect for derrick rose but is continue. he is it means he's still 100 percent. i think he's 100 percent now they say he's stronger than ever Still, we haven't yet to see that. I mean, his points and his assist total is not really showing it very much, but he has been a very good floor director. Um, I think the the real reason I made him a baller was more because of Luol Deng saying he wants to stay in Chicago. That has to be the big news just because of all the, again, all the bad publicity that went towards Deng. He's on the trading block. Maybe him and Noah are going to go for to bring in Dwight Howard. He was going to be their main piece, their selling point. But he kind of came out and said, even after all of that madness last year, he says, I want to finish in Chicago, that's where my career is, that's where I want it to go, so it's just kind of a, I just want to give him a baller, because it's a good little stand of the city, saying, hey, I'm going to stick with it, Rose is back, Dank said I want to stay, they still have great things going on with both Boozer, who's been tearing it up, even though they're, they're you know, the Bulls are below 500 right now, uh, and him and Noah, so I mean, it's a good, that's a good combo four that could definitely get you back in the playoff hunt, and have a chance for at least making an Eastern Conference final run. Absolutely. It gives them a great shot for the Eastern Conference Finals. I still don't see them at this point being able to challenge the Miami Heat. I think the Heat are too loaded, if healthy, to to be slowed down by the Bulls. But I definitely like the dang comments, the one that he wants to stay in Chicago, that Noah wants to be there as well. They can build around the three if you include Derrick Rose. I just don't see Luol Deng as the number two scorer on a championship winning team. I think he would be a great number three. I think Noah's a great three or four with the rebounding and facilitating that he does from the power forward center spot. So if they can get one more score in there to slot in between Rose and Deng, I give them a legitimate shot. Until then, congratulations on losing to the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals or the Pacers in the Eastern right, Conference right. Semis. It's, they're great years year in and year out, but they're not going to get over that hump unless you get that other score. So now I'll do my my baller. The 76ers this year have started 3-1. and one. 3-0 and in conference, 1-0 and on the road, and that would not be without the play of Evan Turner. He has had a phenomenal start to this year. If you look at his stats, he's averaging, he had 18 points in first game, 20 points in a second game, 23 points in his third game, and 26 points against the Heat. I'm sorry. We're going to switch all of those. The first game was against the Heat, where he had 26. <laughs> so Okay, so every game that I just it's said... It's all the stats. What do I want to see him? He's getting, he's getting 18, 20, 23, and 26 in his first four games, and that's all you need to know. He's <laughs> So some fans are probably saying, wow, he's going up. Well, he's going slightly down, but the fact is how he started <laughs> off so great. And that's to put him on the map for you, having those 26 against, against the Heat. Uh Hey, you could say his numbers in October were that much. Were, he averaged were he averaged twenty six games. He had twenty six points a game in October, and every game in October he played against the Heat. Who else can say they did that, Nick? Yeah, no, exactly. So great, great pride for him. And Turner was a guy you know who was expected to explode last year, and there it just took him about half the season to kind of get going. Now they fully trusted him in their system. Right, Drew Evan Holiday. Turner, Drew Holiday huge. is gone. Right. So now Evan Turner is getting more of a load, more trust, more respect in that offense. He's carrying the way. Give and it to the Buckeye. And he's been able to do it so far. So once again, averaging 22 points a night, five rebounds a night, three and a half assists, and almost two steals. So he is my baller of the week. Now let's see if he can hit those game-winning jump shots like he did back in the Big Ten. Well, that Ohio State team was pretty <laughs> stacked. We'll see if he can do that for the Sixers as they move on. But now, Nick, it's time to introduce a brand new segment. It's called Who Am I? We're going to do this... Who am I? We're going to do this every week. <laughs> And it's basically a little trivia, a little fun and games here. We're going to introduce somebody with clues. Okay. And we don't know who each other are picking. We're each going to pick a person. And the audience doesn't know. We don't know. And we're going to give each other clues, one, maybe two, depending on who it is. And 
we'll guess. We'll try to guess each other's. And if we guess it right, you'll tell us. We'll, t- we'll tell each other. But if we don't guess it right, then we'll leave it for later in the show and we'll tell you near the end who it, who it was. So I'll start off with mine. Okay. Nick, look away from the computer. I had to pull up a couple stats real quick. He's not looking, I promise you. So my guy was a superstar in college, one of the best his conference has ever seen, had a slower start to the NBA than he would have liked, fell further in the draft than he would have liked. He's on a new team this year. And he's averaging over 15 points a night so far this season. Over 17 points a night so far this season. Do you have any ideas? Uh, which, uh, any, can I get any clues on what You can ask questions. You can ask questions. I'll decide if I want to answer them or not. All right. Can I get a clue of what conference you, or what, uh, yeah, what collegiate conference you, was he in a pack big six You know conference? what? Yes, he was in a big six conference. I will not tell you which one because you know college basketball too well and you'll figure it out right away. Yeah, I probably would. Um, let's see. Well, if it's a couple years back, it could be a variety of things. I'm going to go off. All right. Well, let me see if I go, man, I'm not making this easy, Nick. No, I'm trying to think of who is struggling a couple, who's struggling to start the career. At least you didn't get a, if you don't want to guess now and you want to think about it, we can reveal it to the audience. Think about I'll think about it quick. I'll think All about right. that one quick. All right. Um, I'll, I'll give an answer before I switch out. I just have to think of somebody else. Um, maybe I have to go on my Google and come No, 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 no. We're not doing research. <laughs> this is an off the top of your head type of segment. But I'll let you think about it for a All little right, while. So you give me, yeah, exactly. All right, so mine is actually kind of the same. A very good collegiate player. Um, he went to a team that needed some help desperately in the past couple of years. His team is from one of the worst in the leagues last year. And as funny as it is now, they're technically in the playoffs if it were to end after four one week of play and he is approaching the top 10 in point guards in the NBA in both points per game, minutes per game and field goal percentage. Have we mentioned this team already on the show? No. Okay. That takes away a couple of my guesses. I was thinking maybe you went with Eric Bledsoe because he went from the Clippers to the, the Suns. Suns. Okay. No, not going there. Uh, so he's great. Still co- on the same team. Oh, he's on the same team. The team been, just went from the wor- team just went from the worst to uh, still in the playoff line. Oh, so at least you're narrowed down to 16 teams. <laughs> okay, and you and you gave it to me as a point guard. Uh, great collegiate career is what you said. I mean, could it be really as obvious as Kyrie Irving? Close. Close. No, nope, nope, not that. A good pick though. I didn't really realize that. Clean. Yeah, but he was so good last year though. He was great last year when he was healthy, but they didn't make the playoffs. And now, right. as of right now, I'm looking at the standings. They're sitting at the seventh Close. spot okay, in the well, East. Well, I guess everything I said. Well, no, because he's actually in some of the top ten of some of the things I said. Okay. I, guess I didn't give too much. I should have given a little more information. It's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll take one more guess, and then if I don't get it, you can either give me another clue or you can tell me. I'm for whatever reason, I'm just assuming East Coast is where we're going. You know, it could be somebody on Minnesota. Now, now the Timberwolves. Yeah, these are tough, man. Oh, is it, if it's not somebody on Minnesota and it's not somebody on Charlotte or Orlando, I'm done. So I have no idea. All right, so you're just gonna leave it. You're gonna leave it empty. I'm gonna leave it empty. Hopefully, you viewers at home are better at figuring things out than we are. But uh, do you want me to tell you mine, or do you wanna you wanna think about that one a little more? Um, God, I got. We'll, we'll think it out. Let's do our whole full show, and we'll tell both of our answers at the end. All right, sounds good. Then we're gonna move on to today in history. So Nick, what about today in history interests you? Well, one of the things is how about this day in history, November 6th? I'll actually throw out a trivia question. Okay. The person who made his 29th 50th point, 50 point game. 29th 50 point game. Could it be anybody but Will Chamberlain? Was, uh, no, I guess I should have given it to you. That's kind of cheating. Hang on one sec. Oh. Uh, he's, in our, he's in our intro. He's in our intro. Well, I don't know which intro we're going with for this first show. We, it's either going to be the MJ. Intro. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. (laughs) If it's not Wilt Chamberlain scoring 50, I guess it's him. So, okay. So, this day in history, MJ put up 50 for, what did you say, the 19th time? The 29th time. That's phenomenal. Yep, 29th time of career, 1996. Okay, I was three years old. You know, it's tough to remember some things from there. I know. That's why we do this day in history. That's why I'm going to bring back something from 1860. All right. Guess who was elected president today in 1860? I cheated. Yeah, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, Abraham Lincoln is correct. Nicely done. We're looking at our screen at the same time. Like, yeah, this is great. All right, well, now here's one that I know you're not going to get. In 1869, the first intercollegiate soccer game, a college soccer game, was played for the first time on this day in 1869. If you can guess both teams and the score, 
You get a 25 minute FaceTime next week. <laughs> uh, let's go Duke versus Navy. Duke wins 2 1. Not even close, but I like that. Uh, we're going to go Rutgers with six goals over Princeton with four. A lot of smart people playing in that game. All right, I, yeah, a little bit too smart for us. How about All right, one more. Let's see. How about 1995? You mentioned the Dodgers earlier. How about ESPN announced their five-year contract extension with MLB Baseball? Uh, we could even look over. Let's give it a hockey one. Same same year, 19, 1995, Mark Messier with his 500th career NHL goal. Well, that's phenomenal. Mark Messier with a phenomenal... I'm just going to say it again. Phenomenal career. I've said it a million times Phenomenal. today. Phenomenal. New Yorker. Hey, I'm trying to get my hockey accent in there, you know? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Mark Messier, a great career, unfortunately. The injury slowed him down a little bit, but played phenomenally. Uh, <laughs> now, Nick, I hate to break it to you, but we're getting to the end of the show. So, the only thing that's left to do is tell people what's going on next week, but we also got to reveal our Who Am I answers. So, do you have any guesses, or do I just tell you who, who it was? Uh I mean, I'll give you another clue since we're since we're toward the end. Okay. So I told you my guy, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal college career. Slow in his start to the NBA, averaging over 17 points a game. Went from an East Con- Eastern Conference team, and now he's playing for a Western Conference team. Um, hmm. I don't know what else to tell you. He, if you remember a lot of, oh, you know what? Here's here's an interesting one that might give it away. But you'd have to be pretty intelligent to get it. You know those basketball commercials with the, the videos that are like instruction manuals for kids yeah. on, on how to do certain things? Yeah. He was one of the guys in one of the videos as a shooter. So he has proper mechanics. Oh, my God. I feel like I might know it now. Oh, really? Is he from one of my? Is he from the team I pretty much hate? Absolutely. Oh, guys. J.J. Redick? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> J.J. Redick. Of course. It's kind of funny, too, because we did a thing on the uh, evil, the evil ball. The, uh, the beeping ball, kind of the mechanic one. I just kind of thought about, you're, wow, that was a good clue there. That was, um, do you remember those commercials with him teaching people I how to do. shoot? That's yep. funny. Oh, that old basketball stuff. years ago, maybe? Oh, when last time he was prominent, so yeah. he's coming out of Duke. Yeah. But yeah, JJ Redick, over 17 points a game so far this year. He is thriving in Doc Rivers' offense. He's playing that Ray Allen role. Chris Paul's getting in the ball, coming off screens, coming off curls, and he, he's shooting like he did at Duke right now. Well, my roommate will uh, appreciate that. I'm sure we hear a lot of JJ then if, uh, if the Clippers continue that success. Now I know who it is. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Now, so now are you so going to help me? Out let me give you more. All right. I could uh, I could say two words, which the fans may not get because then, but uh, do you want to give away one right now? Or do you want me to? All right. One more clue. Let's see. He, he played. He played in the collegiate basketball in the Big East. You know, I was thinking Kemba earlier. I there just didn't is. say it was Kemba Walker. Was Kemba. I should have said it because I mentioned Charlotte. Yeah. And I just, you did, just didn't. Oh. You just didn't go with it. I, I wasn't confident enough. And then you said Big East and UConn in our intro from last year. Yeah. And so the stat I want to pull out, he's literally just outside the top 10 in field goal percentage, 90, or 40, 46%. He's averaging 18.5 a game for Charlotte. They're tentatively, that's why I said I wanted to put them in there because they're never going to be in the playoff race again from here on out. But right now, they're seven, so kudos, <laughs> Charlotte. So, yeah, give them credit. He's had a good year so far. Hope he can keep it up. He hasn't had a slow start to his NBA career quite like J.J. Redick has. Right. But Kemba Walker's been a guy, one of the most exciting players in tournament history, in the Big East tournament, in the NCAA tournament when he played for UConn. And now he's doing some special things in the NBA. But, Nick, that'll do it for this episode of Full Court Press. Before we go, though, do you want to tell everybody what we're doing next week, or do you want me to tell them? Well, I'll let you tell them, but I want to throw one more nugget in there first. This go day, in, this day in history, also go back to it. How about the inventor of basketball, James Naismith, was born? That's pretty important. We have to throw that out there. Without so November, the inventor November, of basketball, it'd be tough not. to have basketball. <laughs> exactly, be tough to be talking to you guys right now. So November sixth, eighteen sixty one, James Naismith. Welcome Thank to this world. Thank you for everything. Welcome you to did. this world. Happy birthday. Rest in peace, like we and we're enjoying what, what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, next week now... You can enjoy more of what he's doing. Exactly. Enjoy what he did for the rest of your life to honor him. But now next week, Nick, we will be a little bit further into the NBA season. We'll know a little bit more about these teams. Maybe the Suns won't be the fourth seed. Maybe the, the, the Nuggets won't be winless. And we will give our fans a full season preview We'll tell you which teams make the playoffs. We'll tell you who goes to the conference finals and who wins the eventual NBA championship. So be sure to tune in next week. It'll be a lot of fun. For Nick Merrick, I'm Josh Franz. Have a great week. See ya.